بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعلومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of Ma'arif al-Qur'an, the volume on Insan Shinasi, Qur'anic Anthropology. I said this many times and I really mean it, I don't exaggerate. This book uh, is a very good book, mashallah. And this is a book that can clarify many deep issues and I personally benefited a lot from this book. Like the book Adl Elahi Divine Justice by Ayatollah Mutahari that you know we studied in the whole Alhamdulillah. That is also really a great book. So among books there are some books that really can change your understanding and this Ma'arif al Quran is one of those books. Uh, we studied, Alhamdulillah, Khuda Shinnasi, the section on knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now we are studying uh, Insan Shinnasi, inshallah, till it completes. I hope Allah gives us tawfiq to study some other parts of it as well, because it has Jahan Shinnasi, it has Rah Shinnasi, Rah Nama Shinnasi. So there are different things. But at least let us now pray that Allah gives us to to finish this end sanction Allah. And this is our style in the Hose, and I hope inshallah we can preserve it that until we finish a book which is important, we don't uh, stop. If we, you know, we don't have time limits, you know, that you know, okay, this is semester is finished, so we finish. No. We, we go till we finish the book. We have to complete the job, inshallah. As you remember, last week we studied the concept of ikhtiyar or free will. And we explained different meanings for this term and then what we need for human beings is the ability to choose among different options without being forced even if there is a krah or a starar, although there is some pressure but uh, still the, the person is mukhtar the person is free someone who is uh, starving and we in fact have you know permission to save your life even if for example by eating something which is haram but this person is uh, still free. So, as terror does not mean there is no free will. Or ikra, when someone says, either you sell your uh, house to me or I will, for example, kill you. Again, there is ikhtiyar here, but he's not legally and morally responsible, for example, up to certain limit. There are cases that uh, even if they say that I will kill you, you have to still continue with your duties. It depends on the significance of that duty. So, free will means that there is no force, overwhelming force that you have no control at all. For example, someone very powerful takes your hand and um, signs something. You cannot do anything. It's too powerful. Basically, this is fa'il bit tasghir. You remember in philosophy we said this is called fa'il bit tasghir. Fa'il bit tasghir then has no responsibility and has no free will at all. Okay. This is what we discussed last week. Today, inshallah, we want to uh, study some issues that if they are not understood properly, they may be taken as signs of jabr as evidence for Jabr. 
determinism that our, our actions are predestined even Iman and Kof are predestined for example or are decided by Allah we have no role so what are those issues that if they are misunderstood they can cause this there are things that may in the first sight look as suggesting Jabr not Ikhtiyar Ayatollah Misbah Rahmatullah Alay starts with some verses of the Quran or some groups of the verses of the Quran. You remember we had some sets and groups of the verses that show ikhtiyar. In contrast, there are some verses that may be taken as suggesting jabr. Of course, we don't accept that. We will clarify, inshallah. One is those verses, a group of verses that say your Mashiya depends on Allah's Mashiya. Your will depends on Allah's will. For example, in Surah At-Takweer, number 29, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ You do not will unless Allah the Lord of Alameen would will. You cannot will independent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone doesn't understand this ayah properly, may think, okay, this means that we have no role. Even our will is made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have no role. If someone is misunderstanding. The second group of verses that may be s taken as suggesting jab are those verses which say our actions need izn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, need, uh, need permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Surah Yunus verse 100. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تُؤْمِنَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ It's not possible for any soul to believe, to have Iman, except with permission from God, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman is such a fundamental issue. If for Iman and Kufr, we don't have free will, we don't have our choice, then what about other uh, small actions? This is a very, you know, fundamental issue. So if someone misunderstands, says, Iman needs p permission from Allah. So if those who are kafir, means they don't have permission from Allah. Misunderstanding, of course, we will clarify. I keep repeating because I'm worried sometimes a person may listen one minute, you know. Number three. There are verses that refer to qadha and qadar, divine decrees and measures. Everything is registered in a book, kitab. Everything is according to his plans, qadha and qadar, his decree. So they may say, if it is already in qadha and qadar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this has to happen, then it has to happen. You remember the story that someone asked Imam alayhi salam, for example, this apple or this food, is it in qadha and qadar of Allah that I eat or not? And I think uh, he was meaning that he does the opposite, for example, to disprove. And Imam said, if you eat, it was then in the qadha of Allah that you eat. If you don't eat, it, it was not. So Imam didn't let him uh, misuse this. But someone or many people may think like this, that if it is qadha that I you know, get this job or this house or I marry to this person, 
I will do it anyway. If it's not, I will not do it anyway. And then this would make them not very careful about their, de their decision sometimes or not c appreciating their choice. They think this is decided. Okay, these are some verses of the Quran and then we have some hadith, some groups of hadith that may also be taken as suggesting Jabr and actually those hadith are uh, more direct and more explicit about Jabr. Uh, before we go to those hadith, let us uh, study these verses. The issue that everything depends on Allah's Mashiach, Allah's will, Allah's Qadha and Qadha is very clear. And this is result of Tawheed of Ali, unity with respect to the action. But it would only conflict with free will if we were saying that free will of human beings is at the same level as will of God. Either we will or he wills. If there were, as we say, in the same level, dar arzaham, they were the same horizon, then it was a problem. Like for example, either you drive the car or someone else is driving the car. These are two people, two agents, two drivers at the same level. Two fa'il, two doers at the same level. One or the other. But if it is you and your hand, for example, or you and your body, there is no conflict. This is two leads, it's hierarchical. So we are not saying that Allah's will replaces human will. Actually, Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشْ means, you have also Mashiach. Or, Iman is بِإِذْنِ Allah, but you believe or disbelieve. Means that you are not independent. Because unfortunately, most of people think that or maybe you know more or less but i think it's not exaggeration to say that even mu'minin have this problem that we think uh, we are doing things independently or people for example do things for us independently doctor medicine i don't know engineer employer you know we think these people provide us with things independent or we do ourselves things independently Quran keeps reminding us that at the same time that you are free, and there are so many verses of the Quran, you have to remember those verses that talk about ikhtiyar, the whole concept of sending prophets and books, all is if we have ikhtiyar, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So Quran says, definitely you are responsible, definitely you are free, but know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also above you. Don't be arrogant. Don't be too proud. Learn how to observe Allah's will. And if you want to succeed, try to please Him. Try to get His permission, His support. Even those who disobey Him, they must know that they are not able to run away from His power. Or they are not able to na'uzu billah, you know, defeat him, na'uzu billah, or overpower him, or run away from where he is. No. Everyone, everything is under his absolute power. And our ikhtiyar is also chosen for us by him. He decided that we are free. <laughs> And no one can take this freedom from us. He has granted us this freedom. But it doesn't mean that we are independently deciding. So in philosophy we say, you know, fa'il qarib and mubashir, or fa'il ghayr qarib, fa'il ba'id, ghayr mubashir. 
Mubashir is the one that is directly involved. For example, if the king is, or I don't know, the head of government is building a road, Fa'il Qareeb are those people who are working the labor. But there are different groups involved. And finally, for example, the king above the king, of course, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Fa'il Qareeb and Mubashir is the one that who is the last agent that is directly dealing with this. This is Fa'il Qareeb. We are Fa'il Qareeb, for example, in some cases. But Allah is also Fa'il. And maybe even between us and Allah, we have, you know, uh, higher causes till we reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we have in, <coughs> for example, in Mashai philosophy, Prepatic philosophy, the idea of Uqul Ashare. Everything in this world is under Aql Fa'al, the tense Aql, which is the active intellect, and then up to the first Aql, which is the first Sadr from Allah, the first thing which is created by Allah. So, he says, In kalid hal hameye in masail ast. This is the key for solving all these issues. What is the key? I repeat. Dar ezn mashiyat qaza wa qadar wa ghayre که هیچ کدام جانشین اراده انسان نیستند بلکه نظامی است فراسوی نظام علت و معلول این جهانی این مشیه قضا قدر اتسترا نان اف دم ریپلیسز هیومن فری ویل دیر ایز ا نظام ا سیستم beyond these worldly cause and effect system. So we have a huge system, a master system. Part of it is physical, but there is also supernatural, metaphysical, and spiritual, in material, whatever, you know, you can better understand, you can use it. It's hierarchical way. Then, he says, Quran tries to teach us to remember that Allah's will is above our will. In Surah An'am, for example, verse 149, Allah says, فَلَوْ شَاءَ لَحَدَاكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Had Allah wanted, He would have guided all of you. It's not that those who don't believe, they are falling outside power of Allah, territory of Allah. Allah didn't manage to bring them to Iman. No, Allah wants them to find Iman because Hedaya for human beings is to decide by themselves. Inna sabil imma shakiran wa imma kafur. Hedaya in the way of showing the path, providing them with knowledge, is done for everyone. But Hedaya in the sense of benefiting and actually being guided from the guidance which is provided, this is our choice. Emma Shakiran or Emma. Allah could have forced us <coughs> to believe. Or even not force us. In the book Ayatollah Mesbah says, you know. Allah could have forced us. I add, even it may not need to force us. If you remember, Alhamdulillah, I think all of you, maybe apart from one of you, were in the first class, uh, first year when we had Amuzesha Aqa'id, theological instructions when we talked about this and later maybe in other places also that if Allah wants us to do something he doesn't even need to force us 
One way is to force us. You can force us. Okay. One way is he can set up things because he knows our psychology. He knows how we make decisions. He can easily set up things in the way that you freely do what he wants. Remember we talked about, for example, Pharaoh. That Pharaoh was not able to stop man of God to make that dream not happen about a savior coming in Bani Israel, you know, who would rescue them, etc. He not only he was not able to stop that by killing innocent children, etc. He became himself part of the plan of Allah. You remember we talked about what makaru wa makar Allah, wallahu khayrul makirin. It's not that Allah has a plan, Pharaoh has a plan, Allah's plan is better. It's not only that. We said it can mean Allah has a plan. Pharaoh has a counter plan. He wants to stop haq. He wants to stop stop light spreading. What Allah does, Allah then will make Pharaoh and his power and his aids and troops and plans all into his plan. Imagine, for example, if you are uh, playing, uh, for example, a football, say. There are two groups, two parties playing and fighting. And one is going to win, one is going to lose. But sometimes the one who plans this is so confident about his own team that he invites the most challenging team and invites them to play. And he knows how they are going to arrange their team, what techniques, what things you know they are going to use. He has all of them and he plans for all of them. And then by bringing them, he makes this game very interesting. All people of the world want to see this game and then he will win. As a simple example, of course, Allah's example is much greater. But one person, one party planned the whole thing. And whatever the other party is doing is already thought about and there are counter strategies, tactics, etc. Et and actually you want them to do what they can to make this more interesting. Uh, I also mentioned, for example, how children, for example, are being sometimes, you know, targeted by those who do advertisements. They know what children like. And they're not forcing children to buy anything. You know, no one is taking their hands and taking them to the shops to buy. But they somehow program them or, or use their mindsets. And when you see almost every child then goes the same pattern, follows the same pattern, they successful them. Yes. If people are using their aql, using their free will, they don't act out of emotions, they don't act out of anger, like Pharaoh who acts out of anger and arrogance, children out of emotions, etc. If they act rationally, yes, they cannot be programmed in advance. But if they are not acting rationally, you can program them. And they freely get into the same direction that you wanted. So, لو شاء الله حداكم أجمعين also can mean that if Allah wanted, He would have set up things in the way that you would be guided, even freely. <laughs> he could have sent you, you know, some mojizas, some dreams, you know, something, you know. Then everyone would believe, or 99%, 99.99% of people would believe. 
Allah always keeps a distance for us to be tested. He doesn't think 100% crystal clear. He, he gives bayana, but in the way that that bayana can also be ignored. There is bayana, but for whoever wants to be guided. So that لِيَحْلَكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ عَنْ بَيِّنَ يَحْيَا مَنْ حَيَّا عَنْ بَيِّنَ But not by sending miracle to every person every day, you know. <laughs> so there is bayyana, but not too much. So this is about hadith, uh, verses of the Quran. Uh, about the hadith, in addition to the hadith that, you know, we might... Uh, come across about qadha, qadar, is mashia, like the Qur'an, as I said, there are some concepts which are more explicitly suggesting jab, not meaning jab, but suggesting. For example, we have hadith about tina, tina tul mu'min, tina tul kafir, tina means clay. So some hadith suggest that Mu'mineen, good people are created from good tina, good clay. Go far from bad clay. Or for example, about water. There is a you know, very a pleasant and sweet water from which Mu'mineen are created. Because you know, soil needs water to be, become clay. And then there is bitter and salty water and some are made from that. So, someone may say, oh, if people are created from different clays or different water, that means they have to follow in this worldly love whatever they are made from. If their tina suits kof or iman, they have to live like that today in this world. This is one group of hadith. The second is a group of hadith, uh, hadith which suggests uh, and talks about Allah's knowledge about everything that we do. He knows everything that we are going to do. So some people say, since he knows, it means that we have no choice. There's this famous poem attributed to Khayyam. Um, Khayyam was a great uh, person, a very great scientist and at the same time a scholar, a religious scholar. And there is a discussion, some of the poems are attributed to him which suggest uh, idea of jabr, etc. But uh, some ulama say these are not really from khayyam. Uh, Allama Muhammad Taqi Jafari uh, says that Khayyam is dis introduced and described as a person who was very religious and was a religious leader and some of these poems would not match him at all. Uh, and then he says that you know there is discussion how many couplets or how many robaiyat he had there is a uh, range some people say only three belong to him and some say that one thousand so there are different opinions in any way in a famous uh, poem it is said man may me khuram man may khuram vahar ke chun man ahl bovat Man, may, khuram, may means wine, sharab. I drink wine, and whoever is like me, ahl, a good person, a qualified person, nice person. May khurdan man benazdevei sahl bovat. I drink. Sharab or khamr, wine. And whoever is ahl, whoever is qualified, a nice person, would take it easy. It's sahl, it's easy. Would not pr 
protest, would not object, would not condemn. Why? The second couplet explains. می خوردن من حق ز ازل می دانست گر می نخورم علم خدا جهل بود حق means God the Almighty he believes in God whoever was the poet he says God knew from beginning from eternity that I am going to drink خمر he knew that if I don't drink now his knowledge becomes jahl ignorance if God knew that I'm going to drink wine then I have to drink wine otherwise his knowledge becomes jahl ignorance this is a shubha some people may say what I am going to do he knows therefore I have to do it This is a second kind of uh, approach or second group of hadith that talk about knowledge of Allah in advance and then this knowledge of Allah in advance causes people like the, this poet or others to think because Allah knew in advance we cannot do anything else. Three. There are hadith, the third group are those hadith that talk about uh, our sa'ada and shaqawa even before birth or as mutakallameen uh, formulated about our essential sa'ada, felicity or shaqawa, you know, to be fortunate or unfortunate to have happiness or misery even before we are born for example some hadith says as sa'idu sa'idun fi batn ummi wa shaqiyu shaqiyun fi batn ummi when children are not yet born still they are in the womb of mother whoever is going to be sa'id who's going to have happiness and you know blessed life you know felicity is Sa'id right from the time they are in the womb of mother and whoever is going to become like Ibn Sa'id and Ibn Ziyad and Yazid and such people right from the time they are in the womb of mother it is known so they say look everything is decided already it's not even it doesn't say known it's, it says it's there it has happened from their Sa'ad and Shaqawa starts or at least <laughs> from there because maybe before the or there are some hadith this can be the third group that say when the spirit is blown into the embryo then angel an angel would write on the forehead of this child whether he is going or she is going to be Salih or Talih Talih is opposite to Salih Salim is righteous Talim is like for example vicious it is written say so, oh so if it is written then what can we do it is already decided <coughs> so these are some groups of hadith that may indicate or may think that they indicate and suggest Jabr Ayatollah Misbah Rahmatullah says if we want to discuss these hadith one by one their sanat first of all how authentic they are and then their dalalat their meaning their reference it would take us out of this discussion because we are talking about Ma'arif Qur'an but briefly we mentioned three uh, explanations and answers two of them are easier to understand one is more um, subtle and more fundamental and uh, 
he says دقیق تر more precise let us first mention those two things which are easier number one it's a very helpful point number one these uh, hadith and many times general statements for example in the Quran also when we have about human beings إن الإنسان لا يتقى أن رآه استقنا إن الإنسان خلق حلوا etc. Many times we are talking about اقتباع not علت تام. We are not talking about complete cause. We are talking about مقتضي. What does it mean? It means that there is such tendency or entitlement that if nothing is done to stop this that would happen if human beings are not careful don't educate themselves don't train themselves when they become free from needs stagna they see they have no need they will become inordinate but you can stop this. Here also, what we want to say is, for example, Tina has a role. There's a teza, but not, it's not complete cause. For example, if someone is born into a legitimate family, there is father, mother, who are married. This person is not certainly going to become a good person, for example. But there is a that this person can become a good person. But he has free will, he can become a bad person. But it's easier. And if someone is born out of adultery, there is iqtiza. It's easier to become a bad person, but uh, still this person can become a good person. Even this ease and difficulty, these are considered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone is born without his choice into a good family or bad family or, you know, no family at all, uh, if someone is without his choice, you know, born into such case, then proportional to their efforts, to the ease and difficulty, Allah would calculate for them. So a little good thing that a person who is born to bad situation does, it's appreciated. So he has all his these factors in his calculation. But anyway, the reality is that there is impact of being born into um, family, legitimate marriage, or just being born out of uh, sinful relations, for example. This is اختزاء. Another point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in advance who is going to become good who is going to become bad and this is not forcing them because he knows what they are going to become through their own will and those who are going to become good he has a special you know, planning for them extra honoring and blessing and supporting I always mention the example of teachers you know that for example who based on their experience after a few days or a few weeks realize that this person is going to have good results is going to become a successful student etc and Allah's knowledge is not comparable to a teacher if a teacher can Sometimes with 99% of accuracy understand, Allah knows everything. Now, when you see that someone has great 
potentials first and then great achievements second, you may treat them with more attention. For example, you may give them more books, more, uh, I don't know, assignments, give them more time if they have, want to ask you questions, etc. But it's not because of this they become better. Without this they become bitter, but because you know they want to, you can help them more. So maybe we can say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a gardener, for example, another example, that is aware that which flowers are going to be better and may put them in a special flower pot or gives them a special uh, you know soil and you know compost etc but it's not that because of this flower pot they become better it just helps or it just adds to their beauty etc so the ahadis of tina or water which is pleasant and sweet or with or opposite to the water which is salty and uh, bitter are not to say that because of that tina this person became good no it means that because he was going to become good he was given this tina these are two easy answers the third is more fundamental and needs to remind ourselves of some philosophical discussions. Those who have not studied philosophy, so they can listen carefully and shall understand. We need to know that Tina, water here are not worldly. We are not talking about, you know, Allah actually creating us from a clay, you know, in this world, or water in this world. These are referring to something in another realm. In the same way that in Surah Mutaffafin, Allah says, "Inna kitab al abrar lafi aliyin." Aliyin doesn't mean in mountains in this world. You know, it's a very high place in this world. Aliyin is not in this physical world. So, existence has different realms, different degrees. This world, dunya, this physical world, material world, is the lowest and it is most expanded. It's most diverse but also spread over time and space. When we go higher, it becomes more and more uh, united till we reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the maximum unity even there is no separation between wujud and mahiyya in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no separation of wujud and mahiyya his mahiyya is wujud al haqq mahiyyatuhu anniyyatu philosophers have very beautiful sentence which uh, you must be familiar with and if not the wording but the concept is very much uh, clear to you inshallah they say al mutafarriqat fi wa'a az-zaman mujtama'at fi wa'a ad-dahr those things which are separated and differentiated and scattered in the container of Zaman so one comes today one comes tomorrow one next year one after a hundred years and something in the past so they are very separated in time al mutafarraqat tafraqa means to divide to separate so those things which are scattered in the container of time 
they are mujtama'at they are together they are connected fi wa'a'id dahr in the container of dahr dahr is in alam mujarradat like time or zaman in alam maddiyat uh, you may remember even we had discussion about hudus dahri Mir Damad Rahmatullah was someone who was very much talking about this concept of Dahr. And Allah doesn't have even Dahr. <laughs> dahr is for Mujarrada. So, whatever is scattered over time here in this world, when we go higher, they, came to, they come together. And if there are different degrees, then finally they become like one point. The same with a space. We have, you know, east, west, but then all become one. In the Quran, as you know, we have this beautiful ayah, Surah Al Hajj, verse 21. وَإِن مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُهُ وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ Those treasures of Allah which are close to Him. They are unlimited and they are compared to this world much much greater but they are not divided in time or space when Allah wants to send down something to this world Allah would send ma'loom in a known and fixed measure something comes a little of it comes and it will be huge here in this world. For example, treasure of knowledge. A drop of it becomes Allah Tabatabai, for example. You cannot compare Allah Tabatabai's knowledge with Allah's knowledge. A drop of wealth comes and someone becomes Qarun, for example, that we gave him so much of treasures that just carrying the keys were difficult for a group of strong men. So he said, a little of it comes. A little. So that Khaza'in that uh, or those khaza'in those treasures that Allah refers to them here are where things are together not divided so similar to what we are saying about malakut being together so Ayatollah Mispa says keep this in your mind this is one point one premise keep this in mind that there are other realms which are higher, which are more perfect and which are more connected and more united and more simple, not more compound, no, more simple. Then another point is that time can be compressed imagine in your mind something which took one hour you can think of something which took one hour for example you watched a movie or there was a lecture you think about it or you have been thinking about something doing something you think about it at once sometimes you can do it of course our uh, imagination is very limited but just to give an idea of all your life S uh, several or many actually but I heard several people that on a you know program in TV in Iran was about you know people who had near this experience many of them say that they saw all their life 
at once or you know like maybe a few moments or one moment they saw from childhood up to even you know from birth up to end of their life with all the details but it only took a few seconds or maybe even no second maybe they you know so for example for a short time they were dying and then they came back they had review of all their life with all the details even things that people were doing and you know right now we don't understand but they could see it it's amazing you know that how uh, things which are taking time in this world if you go higher then they can be together it's all of course explained and argued in our philosophy you know but it's good interesting that these people also have this experience you remember we said that like someone who is on the roof compared to someone who is in the room and is looking outside from the keyhole the one who is on the roof if there is a group of uh, uh, camels for example going a caravan is going he can see all of them at once although he knows which one is first second third in row but he can see them all at once but the one in the keyhole can only see not only one camel only part of one camel the head the neck and the you know, back etc tail then the next one it takes him time to, to see all of them but the one on the roof sees all of them at once so this life that we have here with ikhtiyar and all other qualities whatever you have done in your life in 60 years 70 years 80 years whatever all this life with all details including ikhtiyar can have presence or manifestation or existence in a higher realm together if is mu'min or kafir with their ikhtiyar over there also they are mu'min or kafir with their ikhtiyar and we can say okay mu'minin over there are in good condition they have good tina or they have you know, kuffar have bad tina for example but it's not in the sense that it is before this world in time it's before this world in rank but it's actually reflection of whatever they do in this world it's their free will that determines this so everything that is in this expanded and extended life in a unified and simple way is the old characteristics are there even in this world we are here for 50 years 60 years i don't know 20 years 100 years whatever but allah's act of granting existence does not take time yeah allah creates at once but it unfolded over time because we cannot say allah is you know taking 40 years 60 years 80 years you know to finish this person or you know to start and finish or this cycle or this like he has no time he's above time and space yeah it's not that for example when this person is moving from this place to another person allah has also to move from this place to that place to create him where are you going you know i have to come after you to create you or I have to go and take you with me. No, he doesn't go to any space. He doesn't also go to this year or next year. This century or next century. He's above time and space. 
So if we go to higher realm and be closer to him, then we will be more uh, united and more simple. So something which is 100 years can become one. Or there can be in, uh, things in between. So maybe, for example, in some realms, 100 years becomes one hour. In another realm, becomes, for example, five minutes. Then becomes a moment. We don't know, you know, maybe there are many levels in between. So in the same way that Allah's act of creating us at once was not meaning that we don't have free will in this world over there is also the same so he says if this interpretation is true if it is acceptable then we can say that those hadiths about Tina are about our existence in the level of Khaza'in in the level which Allah's Khaza'in are there which is Bespasit and Wahid Ala Na'tel Bisat He says we can say in this way as a kind of conclusion everything is in Tina everything ev all our details everything are there and the only thing is that that Tina is created at once is like a point it's like like you know Alam al you know you maybe remember my explanation of Alam al so it's that it's like one particle everything is there and free will is included and in this world then it is just expansion of it not that that's first happening and then second so you have to go by the choice you made there no all choices of life in my words become one choice yeah all the answers we have given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our life all get together and becomes one answer quick yes to Allah or slow yes to Allah or no yes or rejection So if you know that, you know what this person is going to become. If you know this, you can know what is there. Uh, because they are parallel and they are two sides of the same coin. Then he uh, starts with other kinds of jabr. Suggestions, you know, sometimes people from philosophical point of view or from you know, natural point of view or sociological point of view, they may have, or historical point of view, they may have doubts or raised questions. I think we'll discuss this inshallah in the next session. So far, we uh, studied Shubahat, which could be because of misunderstanding some verses of the Quran and some hadith. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. If you have any question, any idea, please share.